Hello dear students, welcome to the botany class. In the previous video, we have studied about the structure of a male reproductive organ of the flower, that is about the structure of a stamen. Now in this video, we are going to learn about the female reproductive organ of the flower, that is about the structure of a pistil. The pistil, which is also called as gynoecium, it is the female reproductive organ of the flower. If a flower contains only one pistil, then the condition is called as monocarpillary. And if more than one pistils are present, the condition is called as multicarpillary. So, if a flower contains only one pistil, then it is called as monocarpillary. And presence of many pistil or presence of more than one pistil is called as multicarpillary. Is that clear? Now in multicarpillary condition, the pistils may be fused together or free. If the pistils are fused, then the condition is called as syncarpus. So in the name syncarpus, syn means fusion. Okay, so syncarpus means here the pistils are fused together. Whereas apocarpus means if the pistils are free, then the condition is called as apocarpus. Am I right? Okay, coming to the structure of a pistil, each pistil, it contains three parts, stigma, style and ovary. So, stigma, it is the landing platform for the pollen grains. That means, it is the tip portion of the pistil. So, stigma is the tip portion of the pistil which receives the pollen grains. And next to the stigma, there is a long stalk-like portion is present. And this stalk-like portion is called as the style. And next to the style, solen region is present. And this basal solen region is called as the ovary. Okay. Inside the ovary, there is an ovarian cavity. And that cavity is called as the locule in which the placenta is located. Once again, I will repeat. Inside the ovary, it contains a cavity. And that cavity is called as ovarian cavity or locule in which the placenta is located. Arising from the placenta are the ovules. And these ovules are also referred as megasporangia. The number of ovules in an ovary may be one to many. Now coming to the structure. So this is the enlarged portion of the ovary. And in this ovary, you can see the locule. So what do you mean by locule? Locule is nothing but the ovarian cavity or the cavity present within the ovary. And in the locule, placenta is present. So, this portion is the placenta. So, in the locule, placenta is present. And from the placenta, many ovoid bodies are produced. And these ovoid bodies are nothing but the ovules. And these ovules are also called as megasporangia. Once again, I will repeat. Within the ovary, there is a ovarian cavity and in the ovarian cavity, placenta is formed and from the placenta, ovules develop. And these ovules are also called as megasporangia. Okay. Coming to the structure of megasporangium. This megasporangium, it is also called as ovule and this ovule it is attached to the placenta with the help of a stalk called finical. So now in this picture this part is called as the funicle with the help of this stalk the ovule is attached to the placenta. So funicle is nothing but the stalk of the ovule. And the junction between the funicle 
and the main body so main body means this entire portion okay so the junction between the body of the ovule and the funicle is called as hilum so this is the hilum so hilum is nothing but it is the junction between the funicle and the main body of the ovule each ovule has one or two protective envelopes and these envelopes are called as integuments so each ovule has one or two protective envelopes and these envelopes are called as integuments and these integuments do not completely cover the ovule but leaves a small area uncovered and this uncovered area it is in the form of opening and that opening is called as micropyle okay so micropyle is nothing but the opening part of the ovule now opposite to the op opening that is opposite to the micropyle the basal part is present and this basal part is called as the chalaza okay chalaza is the basal part next to the integument the ovule contains nucellus and this is the nucellus part the cells of the nucellus it contain rhizofood material and inside the nucellus there is a embryo sac so here is the nucellus next to the nucellus this portion is called as the embryo sac and this embryo sac is also called as female gametophyte because it bears female gamete in the female gametophyte that means in the embryo sac three groups of cells are present they are antipodals egg apparatus and secondary nucleus so once again i'll repeat the structure of megasporangium so this megasporangium it is attached to the placenta with the help of a stalk called funicle so funicle it is nothing but the stalk of the ovule and this ovule i mean the funicle it is attached to the main body of the ovule and the junction between the funicle and the main body of the ovule is called as hilum along with the funicle and the hilum the ovule contains protective envelopes called integuments the opening part of the ovule is called as a micropyle and the basal part is called as a chalaza next to the integuments the ovule contains nutritive tissue and that nutritive tissue is called as the nucellus next to the nucellus embryo sac is present and this embryo sac is also called as female gametophyte and within the female gametophyte three groups of cells are present at the chalazal end antipodals are present and at the micropylar end egg apparatus is present and this egg apparatus consists of one egg cell and two synergids and at the center it contains secondary nucleus so this is about the structure of megasporangium now coming to the process of megasporogenesis the process of formation of megaspores from megaspore mother cell through meiosis is called as megasporogenesis ovules generally differentiate a single megaspore mother cell in the micropylar region of the nucellus it is a large cell containing dense cytoplasm and a prominent nucleus now megaspore mother cell undergoes meiosis to produce four megaspores so once again i'll repeat the topic megasporogenesis means the process of formation of megaspores from 
megaspor mother cell through meiosis okay so consider this is the megaspor mother cell how this megaspor mother cell is formed now in the uh, ovule any cell of the new cellus at the micropylar region it enlarges in size and it becomes the megaspor mother cell now this megaspor mother cell it contains single nucleus which is diploid now at the stages of development this megaspor mother cell it divides to form two megaspores and once again it undergoes division so instead of two it produces four megaspores okay so this megaspore mother cell undergoes meiosis as a result of this four megaspores are formed now of this four megaspores only one megaspore is functional and other three will degenerate so this is the functional megaspore and the other three or the remaining three megaspores degenerate okay now what happens next in majority of the flowering plants one megaspore is functional while the other three degenerate the functional megaspore develops into the female gametophyte the embryo sac formation from a single megaspore is called monosporic development so once again i'll repeat the topic so during megasporogenesis what happens is from a single megaspore mother cell four megaspores are produced right now of these four megaspores only one megaspore becomes functional and the remaining three degenerates right now this functional megaspore what happens is here the nucleus of this functional megaspore and this nucleus is haploid here because this megaspore mother cell undergoes meiosis as a result of this the megaspore contains haploid nucleus now this megaspore i mean the functional megaspore the nucleus of the functional megaspore it undergoes division i mean mitosis mitosis division takes place here as a result of this two nucleate then four nucleate then eight nucleate embryo sac is formed now after the formation of eight nucleate nucleate the three nuclei migrated to the chalazal end and forms the antipodals again three nuclei move towards the micropylar end and forms the egg apparatus in which it contains one egg cell and two synergids and the remaining two nuclei at the center forms the polar nuclei now these two polar nuclei fuse together to form the secondary nucleus in this way from a single megaspore female gametophyte or embryo sac is formed and this type of development is called as monosporic embryo sac development the nucleus of the functional megaspore divides mitotically to form two nuclei they move to opposite poles forming two nucleate embryo sac the nuclei again divide two times forming four nucleate and eight nucleate stages of the embryo sac these divisions are free nuclear that means nuclear divisions are not followed immediately by the cell wall formation after the eight nucleate stage the cell walls are laid on leading to the organization of the typical female gametophyte 
six of the eight nuclei are surrounded by cell walls and organized into cells. Remaining two nuclei are situated at the center from the secondary nucleus. A typical mature embryo sac is eight nucleate and seven cell or it is also called as polygonum type of embryo sac. Okay, so these are about the stages of development of female gametophyte. So this is the structure of mature embryo sac. Coming to the next topic that is types of ovules. Ovules have been separated into six categories based on their shapes. They are orthotropous ovule, anatropous ovule, hemianatropous ovule, campylotropous ovule, amphitropous ovule and sarcinotropous ovule. Orthotropous ovule which is also called as atropus. This is where the body of these ovules is straight so that the chalaza, the funicle and the micropyle are all aligned. So this is a straight ovule in which the micropyle, the chalaza and the funicle lie in the same direction. So next type of ovule is called as anatropus. It is also called as inverted ovule. In this case the ovule become completely inverted during the development so that the micropyle lies close to the hilum. So here the micropyle and chalaza lie in the same direction but funicle it lies close to the micropyle. Next type is hemianatropus. Here the body of these ovules become at a right angle in relation to the funicle. So it looks like the ovule is lying on its side. That means here the chalaza and the micropyle lie in the same direction. And these two are placed at right angles to the funicle. That means the micropyle and the chalaza are placed at right angles to the funicle. Next one is Campylotropus. Here the body of this type is bent and the alignment between the chalaza and micropyle is lost and the embryo sac is only slightly curved. Here the embryo sac itself is slightly curved and this type of ovule is called as Campylotropus ovule. And next type is amphitropus. Here the body of the ovule is very much curved that the embryo sac and the ovule itself take the shape of a horseshoe. Next is, I mean the last one is sarcinotropus. The funicle in this case is especially long that it creates a nearly full circle around the ovule whose micropyle is ultimately pointing upwards. That means here the funicle is very long and it completely covers the uh, ovule. Okay. And these are the types of ovules. And these are about today's video. Hope you all understood the topic. Thank you.